were some people that were illiterate way back in the day. It was easier to make a sign that was the shape or object that you specialize in. A butcher shop would be a, a, a cleaver chasing a pig type of thing. And then as people became more uh, um, used to reading and, and signage and all, then the, the painted word or, or displays became more and more popular. The sign painting, a lot of it comes from uh, you know, guys that did um, backdrops for uh, plays or, or theater groups um, up my way in New England, it was real common to have uh, uh, those guys that were working at the Grange Hall doing uh, pictorial work to go out and also do billboards and, you know, things just develop as necessity. I like to tell people that uh, sign painting pinstriping saved my life. Um, as a kid, uh, we worked in d the dairy farms around the neighborhood. Summers you spent uh, working in the hay fields, um, something I was uh, uh, pretty allergic to having to, to do, not just uh, the hay fever, but physical labor itself I'm allergic to. So um, I kind of had some of the natural skills. My dad picked up on my ability to draw letters, not necessarily draw horses and, and cats and that sort of thing, but um, um, through his background, he, he had an understanding for, I guess, my aptitude in that. And uh, he kind of helped guide that, and um, so I ended up painting signs and trucks for those farms that we hung out at, you know, for spending money. I was still in uh, high school, and, you know, developed my skills that way. Uh, made a lot more money than we did working in the hay fields, and it saved my life. <laughs> Basically, there's two techniques. You'll see some people that use a stick with a rubber knob on the end that's called a, a mall stick, and that goes way back. Artists use them, you know, hundreds of years ago. Um, it's all a form of steadying your hand. Um, I call it using the kickstand. So um, the, I don't like a lot of clutter when I'm trying to, you know, work on these trucks or if I'm standing way up on staging. So just what we call the hand over method, and it's just a way of steadying your hand. Most people like to watch, and so they'll see us, let's say, uh, palleting the brush. And the process of palleting the brush is you're, you're loading the brush, which operates a lot like a fountain pen. And so the majority of the brush holds your paint, and the tip of the brush is what gives you the stroke or the letter form that you're looking for. And by pushing down on the brush or letting up on it, you can broaden that or thin it down. And so if you're doing a letter that features a thick and thin line, you're letting up and pushing down. Palleting is also how we keep the paint wet or flowable. If it gets too dry, you get a dry looking stroke. So you know, that's part of what people see and they're always kind of mesmerized by you palette, you brush a couple strokes and you palette some more. That's what we're doing. That technique takes time to learn. It's a, it's a feel thing. You have to learn how to feel what's the right drag on the brush for your preference. Um, and depending on what we're doing, if we're striping, we want to pull a longer line, but we don't want it thinned down too much. Different products assist in that. You can use fast drying thinners. You can use things that uh, um, stretch out the, the paint flow, but doesn't necessarily make it break down like some thinners do. So it's always trial and error. And for a lot of us, it's um, you know self-taught and learn as you go. So pinstriping and symmetry, um, some people are really good at it, some not so much. Um, you have to train your eye for symmetry uh, and, and, and so in most cases when you're striping a vehicle you come to the front of the back and you're going to work on a decoration that is truly has to be symmetrical. So you're just training your eye and you're looking at objects on the vehicle, sometimes you line it up with a thumb. More common nowadays people will draw a, a line or a series of lines to try and help guide them. I don't particularly care for that method, um, probably because I've been at it for too long. If we're going from side to side of the vehicle, of course, we take advantage of the fact that you can only see one side at a time. How do we keep them all the same? Um, typically, for myself, each uh, design element, I kind of assign a name to it, a uh, rat tail or a, a, a lazy ass or something like that, and you memorize it from side to side. Nowadays, with everybody carrying a, a camera in their pocket, take a picture, hold it up while you do the other side, mirror image it. Some people back in, when I was coming up through, they would have mirrors in their shops, so the mirror image on the wall, they, they'd strike that side first and then stand over here. Most people didn't even know what they were doing, but they're just copying. There are some people, some good friends of mine that are absolutely phenomenal at symmetry and, and their skill level allows them to not even think about it and they can match it, you know, inch for inch. 
I belong to the antique truck clubs up in New England and in Colorado and Arizona, um, places that we've lived. And um, I'm used to being around the trucks. It's one of my favorite things in the sign business to do. I met the DeBerardinis at uh, Antique Truck Show down here in Florida. We had a small display there. And I believe they kind of recognized um, the work that we do is something from uh, the Northeast and similar to what they were used to where they came from. And I had seen their trucks the prior year. Um, I was impressed with the number of trucks that they have and the fact that they do most of the work themselves. And they came to me and said, hey, you kind of do the New England truck style? I said, absolutely. It's, it's what I love to do. Um, and they said, well, great. Uh, why don't you take a look at what we have and what we want to do, and we got it together, and um, it's been a great relationship since. Uh, these folks in particular really appreciate the look that, uh, that I like, and uh, we're able to work together really well, so it's been a pleasure. So when it comes to the gold leaf that's on these vehicles, or, or most forms of what we call surface gold, which goes directly onto a vehicle or a sign. First step is after you've made your pattern, done your layout, you just brush on um, the glue or what we call a size, and that has a, a drying time um, based on the product that you're using, sometimes an hour, sometimes three, 12, whatever. So it's a quick drying size. You have a window of time and you can apply the gold at a proper uh, time frame without it getting too dry. You can get the most brilliance out of it. We do a quick cleanup with a cotton ball, being careful not to you know, get our fingerprints all over everything. We're gonna clear coat it. Um, so you don't want a bunch of oil on there. The next step in these particular trucks is we do what's called an engine turn burnishing and that just adds brilliance to the gold. If you would just allow it to be as it is on the side of a vehicle in certain lighting it just doesn't show up. Whereas um, you're scoring lines of an engine turn into the gold then it has constant brilliance from any angle. I and mean, that's desirable. People are used to seeing it for over I don't know, probably 75 to 100 years now. And so it's a, a desired effect. After that, protect it with some clear coat. We brush it on, you can spray it on if you're gonna do that. And then the cleanup process would be to outline the letter, shadow it, or finish it off, whatever's gonna you know, embellish it the way the customer wants. So in graphics, um, in general, uh, good graphics are something that get your attention or, or stop your eye um, from scanning the horizon and force you to read a message. So part of you know, being a sign painter, a uh, graphic artist if you will, is to create that type of artwork. Um, we take it in with the sign painting side um, using different techniques, shading, outlining, things that make letters look three dimensional, enhance them, but make them still extremely legible. That's kind of what we try to do in our shop. Um, hand painting, uh, hand lettering, um, it's more attractive to the eye. People now see the difference after you know, being uh, overwhelmed with the same old you know, stuff. Um, they can, I think, get a greater appreciation now seeing a little bit of the hand lettering come back.